Focus on Him and not the storm. Don't, Because you start focusing on the storm, you're going to cry out and you're going to manifest and you're going to actually lift up the storms. Come on. The more you focus and talk about the things that are going wrong, the more you're lifting them and exalting them. And what we ought to be exalting and lifting is the Word of God. Yes. It's Jesus. Come on. So when a situation arises, step one, make sure that whatever you're saying, thinking, or doing, because out of the abundance of the heart, speak at the mouth. Make sure that you're not... You're not cursing yourself from your rightful blessing. Some people are losing faith in the Word of God because they're trying to confess God's Word. They're trying to hold on to promises. But at the same time, they got salt water flowing out of the same fountain that fresh water is flowing out of. And that can't be. We can't be cursing. Come on, we can't be speaking in faith. we got to just decide where we're going to be. A good tree can't bear a bad fruit. Come on. Come on, we gotta. We can't be. If we're double-minded in all our ways, James says we can't expect to receive anything. We cannot be double-minded and unstable in our faith. Come on, our faith has to figure out something and hold to it. That's tough, and that's what we're talking about this morning in this battle. Jericho, it's a place of leading the cursing. Bartimaeus, the Bible says, hears that it's Jesus. At first, his faith is placed in what he hears. Because he's blind and he can't see. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Yes. In other words, you've got to choose what you're going to put your faith in. Is it in what your situation describes? Is it in what your problem promotes? Or is it in what God's word says can take place? Faith comes by hearing the word of God and acting upon it. Amen. There's a wise man and a foolish man. The foolish man heard the word of God, didn't act upon it. The wise man heard the word of God, did act upon it. When the storms came to both those houses, the man who acted or stood upon or believed in or confessed and professed the word of God, his house was spared. Come on, his house was spared. But the Bible says, great was the fall of him who did not act upon the word of God. For to be hearers, but doers as well. Can I get an amen? amen. Bartimaeus cries out to Jesus for a change in his life. For a change in his situation. For this impossible thing. And as soon as he cries out, there's the crowds telling him to be quiet. Yeah. I can assure you, the moment you start to cry out to Jesus, there's going to be a crowd of enemies gathered around yeah. you. To try to stop you. To try to quiet you. To try to shut you down. How many bold believers we have in here this morning? Yeah. Come on, how many bold believers? How many of you can face the attacks of the enemy like that? When you are crying out for the thing that your family needs. Come on. When you are crying out for your situation. And as soon as you do. An, an embarrassment will set in. Yeah. Guilt will set in. Things will be rehashed and reopened. Scars will be opened. Uh, uh, wounds will be reopened. Satan will use every tactic. He will gather around you crowds of all sorts of mistakes. All sorts of negativity. All sorts of pessimism. And you will begin to have to at that moment decide. Am I going to grab onto that? And let that grab onto me? Or am I going to shout all the louder? Come on. Yeah. Come on, Tim. Shout out the louder. <laughs> Sometimes it seems like hell sends every devil against you. Come on. There's times when we can face things and we sense that there's an enemy, but then there's those times when it seems like everything in hell's been unleashed against us. And you're standing all alone. Think of Bartimaeus with everybody around him telling him to be quiet. Think of the place and the position he had to get to and the decision he had to make. Am I going to bend and bow under the pressure of the people around me? Or am I going to hold fast to my confession of my faith? The Bible says that he shouted out all the louder. You know what he did? He did the same thing after the attacks as he did in the beginning. Here's the common role of simple-minded, limp-wristed, weak faith believers. Glory to God! The crowds and the enemy begin to shout against you. Well, God, if it's your will, come on, I'm believing for this God. I'm, I'm going to come back. Well, and then the attacks come on God if it's, your, if it's your will. Come on, the Bible says when, when they came to Jesus and they said, Are you willing? He said, I am willing. Come on. He is always willing to promote you, to bless you. Not just so that you escape uh, the tragedies and the trials of this life, but so that you give honor and glory to his name. So that you will tell people the reason you are the way you are and the reason you came out of what you came out is only because of Jesus Christ. Bartimaeus went into the situation the same way he went through the situation. And as a result, he came out of the situation 
We got to have faith. Come on. Yeah. And the same way we go in is how we got to go through. And the only way we're going to be able to get out is if we go through the same way that we started. He kept shouting for light. Jesus calls him aside. The Bible says that he casts his cloak. And that cloak represented all that he was is a blind beggar. That cloak was his garment that labeled him and identified him. Some of you are wearing garments right now this morning. And you've allowed people to put them on you. You've allowed your mistakes of your past to label you and identify you. You've allowed people to speak things into your life. You've allowed this world and the culture of America to describe who you are. Jesus is looking at this man. And as soon as Bartimaeus hears this word and he gets that, the Bible says that he cast off his cloak. He cast off his fears. Come on, somebody say amen. He cast off his discouragement. He cast off his sin. He cast off whatever it was that made him blind. Whatever it was that caused it. Whatever it is. Well, I drink because my dad drank. Come on. I smoke because my mom smoked. I swear because everybody around me swears. I'm a hypocrite because everybody. Come on. We cast that off. We get rid of that label. We throw that down. And we come to Jesus. Amen. Yes. Changed and different. With our eyes open. Bartimaeus. First believe because he heard. But now his eyes are open and he's believing because he's seen. Come on. We believe first because we hear the word of God. But if all you do is hear and you don't ever see something, you might want to check your faith at the door. You might want to find out why there isn't something manifesting in your life. Come on. we got to go from just hearing and believing to seeing and believing. Come on. The manifestations of God, the miracle. He said signs and wonders are going to follow those who believe. Come on. Those are visible things that we're going to see. Yeah, it says, and I close. The last thing Bartimaeus did, I love the most of this whole story. He comes to Jesus. He said, your faith has made you whole. And the Bible says he begins to follow Jesus along the road. I love that. Because I know a lot of people follow Jesus from a distance. <laughs> Come on. People are following him from off to the side. Come on. They want what he has, but they don't want to be seen with him. They want all the benefits of being a Christian, but they also want to be on this side of the road because the world, hey, is kind of fun. But the Bible says Bartimaeus followed him on the road, on the same road he was on. Yes, it does. We got to get to be a type of people, come on, that follow Jesus boldly on the road. Not crawling through the tall grass. Come on. Come on. Not going from tree to tree like some sort of a monkey. Come on. Not going from rock to rock. We follow him on the road so that everybody can see we're just like him. That's a scary thought. Let me just pause. That's a scary thought. How many of you have ever boldly been following Jesus and then stuck your foot right in? Mm-hmm. Messed it up bad. Messed it up so bad. You just knew you just destroyed all of heaven. All of God's witness in your life. All of his authority. You, just, you messed up so bad. You know, there is nothing greater for somebody out in the world who messes up every day and has no hope has no courage to see us mess up and turn back to a God who with arms of love and grace welcome us back in. There couldn't be anything greater for them than to see us. What's, what turns people away is when we're so highly minded. Come on. And we mess up and we turn like we did or we act like we did. Come on. We've got to be visible. we got to be on the road with Jesus. Not hiding off to the side or, or you know hiding in the temples or behind this or behind that. But on the road with Jesus. How many of you want to be on that road? Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. I'm telling you, we are in a time, we are in a season when that <laughs> precious book that God says, when everything else is consumed by fire and everything else is burned up and passes away, that, and that book alone is all that's going to be left. Yeah. I'm going to take some stock in that and believe that that word, if it's going to, if it's going to escape and be preserved in all that's coming, it can help me escape and help preserve me in all that's coming. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. The Word of God. Yes. So many churches aren't preaching it. And they're not teaching. Oh, they're grabbing parts. They're grabbing parts. But they're not holding on to the full them. And there are some other groups who are adding to it or taking away from it. I think for those of you who are hungry, who are thirsty, and who are searching, and who are believing in it, and when the storms come against you, you cry out even louder, and you're holding to it, I believe there's a double portion of it going to be coming your way. Today's word, today's message is simple. Speak His word in your life. Amen. Every day. Amen. Amen. Keep speaking it. 
even when the crowds and the enemies and the situations come against you. That's when wisdom will protect you. That's when the word of God will come along. I want to close with this. Facebook. A couple of things that I found on here. God's word is here too. And then the enemy's word is here too. Yes. Two columns. Here's what God's word does. God's word is to still you and calm you. The enemy's words are to rush you and disturb you. Come on. There's liberation right there. So you're rushed all the time. God's word does not rush you. It brings peace and it calms you. God's word is to lead you. Come on. My word is a light into my path. And come on. And it's to my feet. What it is, God's word is there to lead you. Where Satan and the enemy and his word is there to push you. If you feel like you're being pushed into something, you might want to question what it is that's doing the pushing. Amen. God's word is to comfort you. Satan's words are to worry you. God is there to reassure you. Satan is there to frighten you. God's word is to enlighten you. And the enemy is there to confuse you. God's word is to encourage you. Satan's word is to beat you down. Only you today could choose which word you want to believe. As for me and my house, I choose to serve the Lord. Yes. Amen. And believe in His Word. Would you stand? Please, would you come on up? I know situations are tough. I know storms can be brutal. I know they can be violent. And I know that you're giving it all that you have. And you're doing the best that you can do. But there comes a time, I think, when all of our faith is tested. Where we're believing for something, we're holding on to something. And we're trusting in God to make known whatever it is, or to reveal, or to, to shine His light on us. And we begin to stand on them in faith, believing for it. And then everything just seems to smother it even more. That's the very moment you've got to decide. That the same faith that got me here to this level of attack, that's the same faith i got to hold on to. And you've got to be persistent. Notice when Bartimaeus was crying out, he got the attention of the crowds. The enemy saw that. And in this story, the crowds were the enemy because they were trying to keep him from getting his sight. When he cried out to Jesus and he stood in faith, believing, he, called, he didn't just call him Jesus, he said, Son of David. That is significant in the Old Testament because the son of David was the one who was going to revive and redeem the people of Israel. And he needed revival and he needed redemption. He needed his sight. So he was calling out the word of God. And as he did that, he got the attention of the enemies. When you call out and you trust in the word of God, you better believe most assuredly you're going to get the attention of hell. And every devil that's been assigned to you. But so what? Because his faith was persistent, he got the attention of one more who was in the crowd that day. His name is Jesus. Yeah. There's nothing worse than getting the attention of the enemy and then stopping in your faith and losing the attention of Jesus and being stuck right there, facing the enemy on your own. If you're going to begin to cry out for Jesus, you've got to stand your ground and believe that if you cry out persistently, he hears that. And he comes because you get the attention of heaven. Persistent faith. That's what we need today for what we're going to face. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever's presented itself to you, unknown things, uncertain times, confusion, a mixture of faith and fear, you this morning to just cry out even louder. Cry out to the one who can preserve you in your life. Cry out to him and get heaven's attention. How many of you are glad you started to walk with Jesus? Come on, with you man. You're thankful that he's, he's reached out and he said, come on, my child. My child, let's, let's go. And 
there comes a time in our lives when we walk with him and he releases our hand. Amen. Amen. He's wanting us to follow. And it gets hard. I honestly believe that one of the reasons Bartimaeus got the miracle because Jesus knew what he would do after getting it. A lot of people get a blessing, get a breakthrough, get a miracle. See you later, though. Bartimaeus followed him on the road. I think God knows your heart. Amen? Amen. He knows our position. He knows our attitude. There are so many people that are coming to him to get a fix, to get a remedy, to get whatever. And God knows. The moment they get it, they're gone right back into where they were. 